All righty. How are you guys doing? Awesome. Bless, bless. That sounds good. Anybody top of double bless? That's almost like that pre-bless. Remember that pre-bless food video? Yeah, okay. At least two of us remember that. Praise God for that. That's incredible. But hey, we got uh, some important business to cover tonight as we get started. Uh, first and foremost, we get to sing happy birthday to Mark over here trying to be casual and, and that incredible guy. So on the count of three, we're not just singing happy birthday to Mark. We're singing happy birthday to Mark Las Vegas style. You guys ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. That's right. You, Mark, over there. Happy birthday to you. The guy dressed in the... What color is that? Well, happy birthday, dear Mark. Ar, ar, ar. Happy birthday to you. That's right. Nice. Happy birthday. And we also want to start off with some announcements tonight. That's right. Speaking of happy times, we got a conference coming up here at Sunrise, October 16th and 17th. Lamb and Lion Ministries, the Great Reset Conference. All of us speakers are going to be speaking about the Great Reset, for those of you hooked on paying attention. And so, uh, but hey, how many of you guys got a ticket? Praise God, you get to come. The rest of you, watch online. Uh, we got a seating capacity. But if you missed that conference, Lord willing, we're still alive and still here, you got another one. Signs of the Times Conference. We're partnering with Southwest Radio Church, and uh, we're going to be dealing with, is it too late? Are there signs that we're living in the last days? Oh, just a few. That's what we'll be talking about at that conference. But that one, still a few seats left. Uh, if you want to attend here at Sunrise, uh, November 20th and 21st, Again, the same way you do that, easiest way, you can either go to Southwest Radio Church's website, swrc.com, or go to the teaching website, getalifemedia.com, and look for that banner on the right-hand side. Click on it. It'll take you to the registration. Get registered. Get your ticket and uh, be a part of that as well. So we not only want to uh, uh, let you know that, we also want to let you know that if you're here, if it's your first time or you've been coming for a while and if you yet to fill one of these out, if you can fill one of these out, it's called a connect card. Why, Pastor Bobby? We can connect you. That's right. That was not me. That was Pastor Bobby. That's called lip syncing back in the 80s. Uh, but anyway, uh, connect cards. We want to connect with you. So if you can fill that out with some basic information on the side there, there's uh, check boxes. If you're interested in membership, classes, prayer requests, things of that nature. If you could put it in one of the two offering boxes as we exit, that would be greatly appreciated because... That's right. We want to connect with you. Uh, so if you could do that, it'd be great. But hey, we want to welcome you not only here tonight, we want to welcome our online family. Tonight is no different. We're going down to the land of chicken. That's right, folks. Kentucky. As in Kentucky, you know what kind of chicken. And I preached here a couple times before some conferences, and them people are serious about eating chicken. They're proud of that chicken thing. But let's, I digress. That's not what we're here to talk about. We're not promoting chicken products. Uh, we're here to say hi to Sammy in Kentucky. He's one of our online listeners. And not only Sammy, again, we're doubling up. We also got Sandy in Kentucky. So that's right. Feel free with your best Kentuckian accent. That's right. We're going to say on the count of three, a big old howdy-ho to Sammy and Sandy in Kentucky. And if you want to include her dog, you're more than welcome. I don't know its name. Make it up as you go. On the count of three, one, two, three. Man, I hope that came through. That was your best one yet. That's right. Uh, we also want to let you guys know about our new online membership. Uh, Pastor Bobby, what is it like orbiting the planet? It's pretty cool. He gets to do memberships all over the world. If you're interested online, uh, email membership at getalifemedia.net. And uh, we got all kinds of people responding from literally all over the world. No kidding. Uh, joining Sunrise and looking for a healthy church. So we're offering online membership classes. Pastor Bobby's taking care of that. So, Or if you know somebody here, a family member, a friend uh, who would like to get further connected with Sunrise, uh, have them shoot an email at membership at getalifemedia.net. Or for our church family here, uh, if you want a, a prayer request, or if you're our online family, if you have a prayer request, shoot us an email at prayer at getalifemedia.net. That goes directly to our prayer team, and uh, we'll get you on the list and immediately begin prayer uh, for your request, okay? So we're going to uh, have an offering tonight, and we're going to pray for that, and then we're going to pray for our study. If you're here tonight and you'd like to partake in that, you're more than welcome. If uh, you want to do so, you can uh, put it in one of the two offering boxes as we exit. Uh, or if you're online, if you'd like to help us out, that would be greatly appreciated as we share God's truth here in Las Vegas and around the world. You could do that in a couple different ways, three different ways. You can go to the appropriate website, look for the mailing address. You can mail it in that way. Or there on the website, you should be able to see donate or give. You can click on that and do that. Or even now, you should be able to see on the screen a number. That's your texting option. For those of you hooked on texting, uh, you can do a text give. But let's pray for that. And we'll pray for our study and we'll get started. Father, we love you and thank you so much for all that you've done for us. Thank you for, again, as always, thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to forgive us of all of our sins so that we could be rescued from hell. 
and what is also coming to this planet, hell on earth, the seven-year tribulation. We thank you for loving us as your bride. Thank you for the inheritance you've won for us, not just escaping what we deserve, the penalty, but the promise of a future beyond our wildest dreams. Heaven, the millennial kingdom, the new heavens, the new earth. It's just, it's just so awesome. We thank you for that. It's all a gift from you. And God, we also thank you that in the meantime, as we await that wonderful promise, we thank you in the meantime, we have the privilege to grow up in you, to share you, to, to seek you, and to serve you, and, and to give back our time, our talents, our tongue, but even our treasure. And we pray if we were to give today, we'd do so biblically. You tell us not to give under compulsion, which means, of course, we feel like we have to, or we're, we're guilted into it, or no. If we give, we do it because we want to. It's, it's a heart issue. You tell us to be cheerful givers. You don't want our money. You want our heart. But this is just one of those practical ways that we, your people, can work together, God. And hopefully and prayerfully, this is what we pray that you bless this offering for, that we would have the tools that we need as your people to become better disciples in these last days, that, the, that, that this would work towards lost souls hearing your gospel, would receive it and be saved. And also, of course, God, that you would be glorified in it. So please bless this offering. And now, God, as we turn to your word once again, we pray that you'd give us those ears to hear and, and hearts to obey what you would share with us. May we not be hearers only, but doers of your word. Help us to realize, God, that we need to stick with your truth and help us to realize uh, that compromise is never an option. And we cannot mix darkness with light, ever. And we pray that, God, you get us further equipped in these last days. Uh, even with this rise of Satanism that we're seeing, not just in the world, unfortunately, as you know more than we, it's even creeping into the church on a massive scale, Satanism, as crazy as that sounds. But God, you told us this would happen because you told us in the seven-year tribulation that the people there would not repent of their works and they would not stop worshiping demons. And of course, that's who Satan is. He's the biggest fallen angel of all. And so God, get us equipped in these last days and God, if there's anybody in our sphere of influence, anybody that might even be watching online, even if they're a Satanist, or as we're going to see tonight, a, in essence, a practicing Satanist, God, use this study. Draw them to you. Save them before it's too late. But please bless our study. We ask all this in your wonderful name, in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. amen. Hey, once again, we're in our study, World Religions, Cults, and the Occult. We're on our 15th topic. That's how long we've been in this. It's called what, Pastor Bobby? That's right, the rise of devil worship. Now, we've already seen that the, uh, already in our study, we're going to recap the existence of Satan. What's the problem? Not only the world denies the existence of Satan, but how much? 65% of those who profess to be born-again Christians deny a literal Satan. No wonder it's on the rise these days. But since he's real and God loves us in the Old Testament, New Testament, he talks about spiritual warfare, Satan, demons, all that kind of stuff to get us equipped. So we did, we took a look at the character of Satan, the tactics of Satan. Then we dealt for quite some time on the history of Satan. We got, well, how do we get into this mess? How do we get into where people deny the existence of a uh, literal devil, not just in the world, but even in the church? Well, we took that history journey for many, many weeks and we traced that trail and saw how it happened, including how it started to impact the church. Then we took a look at the beliefs of Satanism, okay? And we saw so far a couple different things. Satanism is a religion of self. Literally, I should add the word, really, it's a, a religion of self-worship. It's all about self, me, myself, and I, the unholy trinity. Uh, do what you want to do. That's the number one law of Satanism. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. That comes from Aleister Crowley. This is what caused the fall of Satan, Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28, 8. Satan had an eye problem. I will be like God. I will ascend the Mount of Assembly. I will be God. Well, guess what? The position is not open. So uh, uh, he got judged. And then, of course, he got tricked with taking a third of the angels with him. That's where we get the demons today. And, and unfortunately, this self-worship is the heart of Satanism. As you can see, again, it's the number one law. Unfortunately, it's even crept into the church. It's all about self, 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 self. That's all you get from the pulpit. What makes self feel good? That's Satanism, folks. And most people don't realize it because they've never been taught what Satanism believes. Then we took a last look at last time at the next law uh, is the law of reversal is what they call it. And that is basically doing everything absolutely diametrically opposed, exactly opposite of what God says to do. Shocker, that's what Satan is. He does the opposite, right? But we even saw that they encourage each other as Satanists to talk backwards, to walk backwards, to think backwards, play music backwards. Remember that one? Back masking, all that kind of stuff we saw last time. They also do the black mass. That's the Catholic mass backwards. They focus on the Antichrist. Why? He's backwards, the opposite of the real. 
one and only Jesus Christ. They, of course, are excited to promote hell. Why? Because it's the opposite of heaven. They promote wearing dark and dark things. Why? Because God is light. That's the law of reversal. And God gave us a warning we saw last time that when your society begins to do this, which is a second law of Satanism, uh, you're in a heap of trouble. Isaiah, we saw last time, said this, woe to those who what? Who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who puts uh, sweet for bitter and, and bitter for sweet. And the reason why that society's in trouble is not you're just doing things that are wrong. What's he say? It's not by chance, folks. You're doing what? You're headed for woeful times because you're what? You're doing the exact opposite. It, the exact, that's, a, that's an occult law. That's Satanism. That's their law of reversal, okay? They call evil good, good evil, darkness light, light for uh, uh, darkness, bitter for sweet, sweet for bitter. And that's our world today, okay? It is the occult law of reversal. So you look at that, okay? And you wonder why our world is going down the tubes. And we're seeing this not just infecting the world. Where is it also coming into? And it's already there in the church. And you wonder why it's getting so devilish, not just in the world, but even the church. But we're going to continue on with another belief, okay, tonight of Satanism. And man, I'm telling you, unfortunately, this one is everywhere and most people don't realize it. Okay, we've been fed a pack of lies. Shocker, because Satan's what? He's a liar and the father of all lies. We'll see that again tonight in John chapter 8. But it's even coming into the church. And that's this third law, the law of, here it is, here's your key word, self what? Self-indulgence. Okay, believe it or not, that is a major, major mega tenant of Satanism. Okay, and it's really how our world operates. But let's remind ourselves before we dive into this law of self-indulgence and see if it's really crept into uh, the satanic law into our world and the church. Okay, let's remind ourselves, is that the way that God calls us to live? Just indulge yourself with whatever you want to do, whatever your flesh wants to do? Yes, it rhymes with no, because it is no. Open your Bibles <laughs> to 1 Corinthians uh, 6, verse 9 through 11. God tells us how we're supposed to live after we're saved. And living for yourself, that should be past tense, right? Because now you're supposed to live for Jesus Christ, right? But 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 11, how are we supposed to live after we get saved through Jesus Christ? If you guys find 2 Corinthians, what do you do? Take a look. If you find 3 Corinthians, what do you do? New Bible, it's not even there. That's right. Uh, it's all enough time. Here it is. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9 says, do you not know that the who? Wicked. Now notice he calls them what? Wicked. God calls it wicked. And what it follows the behavior is guess what? Considered wicked by who? God, right? Uh, do you not know that wicked will what? They will not inherit the kingdom of God, okay? In fact, he, I like to, he didn't say they won't. He says, and by the way, don't be deceived about this. This is very important. Do not be deceived, right? Neither the sexually immoral or fornicators, it's any kind of sex outside of marriage, right? Uh, is that an issue today? Uh, even churches today don't even do anything about uh, so-called Christians living together outside of marriage. This is nuts, man, what's going on. Not just in the world, but the church. That's fornication, folks. Sexual morality, right? Or nor idolaters, nor adulterers. Now, some translations, you can say effeminate or male prostitutes. The Greek word there is literally little boys specifically kept for homosexual men. That's, that's the Greek word. That's what that word means, right? Uh, so what is that? Basically, it could be a combination of just flat-out homosexuality, certainly. Uh, but that's like Lambda, men, boy group, stuff that's going on today that's being promoted. Uh, pedophilia. Yeah, believe it or not, that's making inroads. Uh, and nor homosexuals, period, okay, nor thieves, nor the greedy or drunkards, literally those who like to get intoxicated, uh, nor slanders, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And remember, he says, these are wicked. Do you not know the wicked? That People who do these things as a habit of life, this is how they live. This is their quote. What's the word today? Lifestyle. My lifestyle. You're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Why? Because you didn't do enough good works. No, because it's showing that, guess what? You can say you belong to Christ all you want, but you ain't living for Christ. Don't be deceived. That's what he says. You can't mix the two, Right? And he says that, and that is, here it is, that is what some of you, what? What's the word there? Were. Do you see the dichotomy there? That's what you used to do, not anymore, as a way of life. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. So I don't know about you, but if you read the Bible, which I highly recommend, uh, it seems like when you live this law of self-indulgence, do whatever you want, whatever feels good, whatever feels right, whatever my flesh wants to do, that's just my lifestyle, what does God say? Uh, you're in trouble, right? You got a serious penalty. You will not inherit the kingdom of God. 
Rather, God expects if you're truly a born-again Christian, then guess what? That kind of life is past tense. That's what you were, but that's not what you are now. Now, does that mean that Christians can't stumble and go down those roads and whatever in a, a period of what? Yeah, but that's not your way of life. The Holy Spirit convicts you. God draws you back. That's a sign that you're born again because the Spirit is in you and, and you're not comfortable within that anymore. And you don't justify that. Well, that's just my life. No, you got, ah, that is wrong. God, please forgive me. That's healthy. I'm not saying you don't ever stumble into that, but as a way of life, that's what you were. But you're not doing that anymore. But those that say, oh no, that's just my lifestyle. God accepts it. God, mm-mm. You will not, you, don't be deceived, man. You will not inherit the kingdom of of God. They're not saved by your works, okay? In fact, the Bible is very clear. When you get saved, this is how you're supposed to live. It's not about yourself anymore. And self-indulgence, 2 Corinthians 5.15. And he, Jesus, died for those uh, uh, so that those who live should what? No longer live what? For themselves, right? But for who? Jesus, him who died for them and was raised again, okay? And wonders of wonders, again, you see the law of Satanism says to do the exact opposite of that. God says, that's what you were. You used to live for your flesh. You used to indulge whatever you wanted to do, right? Whatever feels good, what's right. That's what you, but not anymore. Now you live for Jesus. But Satan says, no, nope, no, nope. indulge yourself. God says, don't live for yourself. Don't live for your flesh, right? Live for Jesus. And Satan says, no. And folks, I'm telling you, this is the law of self-indulgence and it is everywhere, including the church. Now, if you don't think that this really is a major tenet of Satanism, then let's once again, listen to Anton LaVey and he's very clear about it. Satanism, the heart of Satanism is all about self as we already saw the law of reversal, but this self-indulgence, I will do whatever I want to do, whatever makes me feel good. That's the mantra of our society today, folks. That's Satanism, which tells you Satanism has crept into our world and people don't even realize it. But here he is admitting this law of self-indulgence. Let's take a look. Suddenly there was this man who looked like the devil, you know, to the popular culture and was talking about Satan as this, this positive role model. Mr. Satan, Church of Satan, boom, that's it. We do what we want. But I can do anything that I want to. I can pursue any kind of lustful desires that I might feel. I can uh, engage in any activities that are so-called sinful activities and not really worry about any ecumenical councils making it right for me to do these things. Sex is not the answer to everything, but it's probably the prime mover to a great deal of what we do. Homosexuality, asexuality, bisexuality, transsexuality, not as a tolerance, but as a celebration. We feel that there is no reason why these people shouldn't just flip the coin completely over and simply call themselves what religion has called them for many, many years. Call them devil worshippers or disciples of evil or Satanists. Of course, it's very hard for a person to hang an uncomplimentary label on themselves. And for this reason, for many years, there will be people practicing Satanism as good Christians or other religions. And uh, they will... In, in, instinctively pursue the very same things that we are as they always have. Anton LaVey's legacy is everywhere forever. It, it's, you, you can't unring a bell. He codified the way I think many people, probably most people actually live, but won't admit it. Now, what did he just say right there? You live like this, so whatever I want to do, that's my lifestyle. I do whatever feels good, is what? You're a Satanist. What's ironic is Anton LaVey and that guy will admit it. But how many people will? But that's what he says. But people don't want to admit it. That you're literally following Satan. Remember we saw last week? Who's your daddy? Right? And if you live like this, your daddy's Satan. Your father, the devil. Okay, the scripture says. Okay. But you're, you're practicing Satanists when you what? When you follow this law of self-indulgence. Okay. And again, here's the law. This is, they quote this on their website, their laws, what they believe. And I quote, the law of self-indulgence. They believe that one, Satanists believe that one should live out their lusts and desires and enthusiastically explore the seven deadly sins. Right? Now, for those of you wondering, that would be pride, envy, gluttony, lust, anger, greed, and sloth. And since we brought that up, that's kind of a, a Catholic thing, the seven deadly sins, okay? Uh, for those of you who don't know, that came out uh, by Pope Gregory the Great in the 6th century. 
later a, a Catholic theologian guy, if you want to call him that, Thomas Aquinas, he expounded on the 14th century. Then it got popular by the author Dante. He wrote the poem Inferno in which he pictured purgatory, which is a false Catholic teaching. There is no limbo that you go burn. You either go straight into heaven or straight into hell. Okay, but he pictured that having seven terraces corresponding to the seven deadly sins. Now, unfortunately, it's not just a Catholic thing. Uh, a lot of people think, well, that's the seven deadly sins. You commit that, you can never be forgiven. Yes, pride in being all those other ones, that's not a good thing. But guess what? Number one, they're never called the seven deadly sins in the Bible. That's not biblical. Number two, biblically, uh, any sin will disqualify you for heaven. Okay, not just those particular seven. And by the way, the good news is, though, praise God for Jesus Christ and his work on the cross. He forgives all sins, including the so-called seven deadly sins. So I wanted to clarify that, but that's what they believe, right? And again, uh, we're not here to promote Catholicism. If you want to understand how much that's a pseudo false Christian cult, uh, we got a 12 week study on, on Roman Catholicism. So I'm not going to redo that. Praise God, Pastor Billy. Hey, it was a good study. <laughs> Come on. If we had time. That'd be fun. But anyway, that's right. Uh, but anyway, uh, but it's, but I wanted to bring this up. So it's just a Catholic, but remember we saw uh, last week that they do the black mass, which we're not condoning, right? The Catholic thing, right? But that's what the world does. They limp Catholics, Catholicism with biblical Christianity. It's not okay. But so the Satans do the same, same kind of thing. We're going to do the mass backwards, the black mass, right? We'll see tonight in the issue of homosexuality, they do the pink mass, but we'll see that here in just a little bit. Uh, but that's what they believe. This is the law of self-indulgence. Now, uh, they also believe that one should live out their lusts and desires, enthusiastically explore the seven deadly sins, the Catholic thing. But they also explain this law of self-indulgence here. One's body is inviolable, which means never to be infringed upon, right? And subject to one's own will. And they believe, quote, in indulgence, not abstinence, right? That's the law of self-indulgence. That's straight out from their websites, the Satanic Temple uh, etc. So as you can see, Satan's promotion of sin, including the so-called seven deadly sins, frankly, is any sin you want. Don't tell me what to do. This is why Satanism is so popular today, because guess what? People's flesh likes to hear that. They don't want to hear do's and don'ts. They want do whatever you want to do, right? Remember the people dance, do what we want, right? That's what they want. And that's what Satanism promotes. So guess what? People like that. So they follow that. Flat out become Satanists, or as we're going to see again tonight, they're actually following Satanism but they don't want to admit it or they don't know it because nobody's ever taught them. And that's why we're studying here at sunrise. But this is why it's so popular it panders to the flesh. Instead of denying your flesh and avoiding destruction, you will not inherit the kingdom of God, right? Satanism does the opposite. Okay. Now let's take a look again at the scripture. God says this when it comes to your flesh about yourself, how do you live? Matthew 16, 24 through 26. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone would come after me, what's the first thing you're supposed to do? Deny yourself, right? Deny yourself. Take up your cross, which means you're willing to suffer and follow me. It's in the continuance in the Greek so as to make it a habit of life every day, day in, day out, okay? Whether it works with your calendar or not. Why? Because guess what? Whoever wants to save his life, you're going to what? Lose it. You want to keep living for self. It's all about you and don't live for Jesus. Guess what? You're going to lose it. But guess what? You lose your life for him. Oh, you're going to find out what life's really all about, man. He is good. Right. Uh, and what good will it be if a man gains the whole world, yet he forfeits his own soul? Right. So Satan says, live for yourself and all your sinful desires. But God says, you live like that. You're going to lose your own soul. Why? Because do you not know that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God? Why? Because listening in essence, at that point, if that's your way of life, whether you want to admit it or not, you're following Satanism, not the savior. I don't care if you call yourself a Christian. If that's how you live, you're following Satanism, not the Savior. And that's why God lays it on the line. You live like that, you're in a heap of trouble. And plus, though, what's the fruit of Satanism? Destruction. Satan's a liar. You follow him all lies, right? So you're going to listen to him. He's a liar. You follow and do what he says and his so-called rules and way of life. It will destroy you. Okay, so let's begin to break it down. When Anton LaVey said, whatever lustful, sinful desire we want, what did he mean? Folks, he meant anything and everything you think of. And I mean some really putrid behavior. Okay, so we're going to take a look at some of that. We're going to take a look at the law of self-indulgence that's promoted by Satanism. And you tell me if that law has not just permeated the world, but dare I say, even the church. I'm telling you, folks, this is why things are getting so messed up. Now, the first pro-Satan behavior, pro-Satanism behavior, honoring, if you will, 
the law of self-indulgence is abortion, right? And if you look right down there, guess who's big on abortion? It ain't just, quote, liberals. It's what? It ain't just the Democrat Party. It's what? The Satanic Temple. Satanists are big-time pro-abortion people, and we'll see why here in just a second. But let's remind ourselves, is that how we're supposed to live? Absolutely not. Here's just a few passages on that. God says this, Exodus 2013, you shall not what? Murder. Last time I checked, killing the child in the womb is what? Murder, and it's murder. That's why God says don't do it. Speaking of child in the womb, that's not a blob of fi- uh, uh, flesh or tissue or non-existent thing. It's, it's a baby from conception, Jeremiah 1.5. But I formed you in the womb, God speaking. I knew you before you were born. I set you apart. I appointed you as prophet of the nations. Then we see Psalm 139, 13 through 15. For you, God, created my inmost being. You knit me together where? In my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your words, your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place when I was woven together, i.e. by God. Uh, Luke uh, one forty one. watch this. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby, John the Baptist, the, the blob of tissue, uh, there's not really a person until after it's born. Well, that's what the world says. What does it say there in the scripture? Baby leaped in her what? Womb. It's a baby from birth, folks. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay. So God says, do you do not murder? You don't murder adults. You don't murder babies, right? You don't murder babies outside the womb. You don't murder them inside the womb. You don't murder. So what's Satan do? The exact opposite. He says, we don't just want to murder. And that's not a big surprise because what's again, John chapter eight, we'll see it again tonight. He's a liar and he's a what? A murderer. That's what he's all about. Murder, right? Jesus called it out, right? But Satanism comes and believe it or not, this is one of their big, their big ideals. This is one of the big things they promote, man. They put, pitch a big fit, as we're going to see in a second, that they want to not just murder, they want to murder and kill babies on demand. It is, listen, a part of their sacrament. Listen, not just, they, not just a sac, a, they consider it a religious thing. This is sick. If you think that's gross, folks, we haven't even got to their behavior. This is beliefs. Behavior with the rituals. Remember we saw in witchcraft, people don't want to deal with this, but people are being murdered as we sit here all over the world. Witchcraft. They're murdering people for their body parts to make witchcraft stuff. Witch stuff. It's going on today. Africa, India, all over the place. Even here in America. You don't think the Satanists are killing people? in the ri- We got to wake up, folks. And they consider this a sacrament. And so, no, I will murder children on demand. They're pro-abortion, okay, because that's the law of self-indulgence. Quote, quote, this is straight from their website. One's body is inviolable, never to be infringed upon, subject to one's own will. Can I translate that for you? This law of Satanism is in this phrase, my body, my choice. Sound familiar? That's a law of Satanism. And people who, people who are quoting that, as they said, as Anton LaVey said, you're really a practicing Satanist. Because that's where this is coming from. This is coming from the Satanists. That's our law. My body, my choice. You can't tell me what to do. That tells you how deep Satanism has crept into our world. Okay. In fact, right after, did you guys hear the news about that fantastic law that was passed in uh, Texas against abortion? Guess who was immediately on the front lines protesting it? Satanists. Watch this. Guess who is coming to the rescue of the Democrat Party to fight the Texas pro-life law? The Satanists, <laughs> yeah, who are taking legal action against Texas and arguing that abortion is a sacrament for them. The Biden administration channels their inner legion and also sues Texas for protecting babies. One group now challenging the law, the Satanic Temple. Yeah, the non-theistic religious and human rights group argues its members should be exempt from the abortion ban. Adam Bennett explains why. This isn't the first time this organization has fought back against abortion restrictions, including here in Texas. Their officials say they are ready to help members who want an abortion within the first 24 weeks of pregnancy fight this law. Not the church, not the state. Women must decide their fate. This weekend, the battle over Senate Bill 8 that played out in Houston is a savage assault on women's reproductive rights and across the state tremendous victory for texas and for the country has now gone national the satanic temple is based in massachusetts but has chapters across texas 
The group says its members are exempt from SB 8 under the Texas Religious Freedom Restoration Act, which bans government from infringing on religion. One of the seven beliefs on the Satanic Temple's website reads, quote, one's body is inviolable, subject to one's own will alone. The group's lawyers also sent a letter to the Food and Drug Administration last week demanding members have access to abortion pills, which they say members use, quote, in a sacramental setting. The letter cites the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, which was created to allow Native Americans access to peyote for religious rituals. The group's co-founder said in a statement, quote, we will not be intimidated into silence by an unjust law or an authoritarian state government. We intend to fight. So Satanists are now taking legal action to protect abortion as a sacrament. And I've been trying to tell the pastors and woke Christians on this show and in my speaking gigs that when you vote for Democrats or you refuse to get political because you don't want to compromise your witness, you are helping advance a satanic religion whose greatest sacrament is abortion. Why? Because that's their law, the law of self-indulgence. And again, I'll read it again. One's body is inviolable, which means never to be infringed upon. Don't tell me what to do with my body, my choice. Subject to one's will alone. It's straight up Satanism, okay? And it's not just being promoted in our world. It has infected the Democrat Party. Man, I remember in our witchcraft study, we saw that witchcraft is big time in the Democrat Party. We brought that proof out. Well, guess what? So is Satanism. They're promoting the same agenda, Okay, including, dare I say, the church, the church who is doing the same thing. They're either keeping their mouth shut about it, as he said, you're helping this satanic agenda advance when you keep your mouth shut. Speak up. You're not doing anybody a favor, certainly those children that are being murdered. Speak up. And I'll, we did an eight-week study. I'm not saying this to boast. We did an eight-week study on abortion, abortion, the mass murder of children, because that's what it is. The average church today, when's the last time they even talked about abortion? They don't, ever. You have to speak up. He said, because you're complicit. Your silence is basically, in a backhanded way, helping Satanism promote in our country. And then that's bad enough. But then there's churches out there that say, oh, no, as we saw in our abortion study. There's churches that say a woman has a right to choose. No, a, nobody, I don't care, woman, man, female, nobody has a right to choose to kill somebody. That's murder. But that's what they say. And listen to this stat. It isn't just churches that are keeping their mouth shut. Churches are infected with this law of Satanism, my body, my choice. Quote, only 52% of Christians identified abortion as a sin. Now, for those of you hooked on math, right here in the United States of America, that means only 48% of so-called professing evangelicals say there's nothing wrong with abortion and the murder of children. That's in the church, not the world. That's in the church. Half of the church has no problem now with murdering children. Why? Because you're following Satanism. Now, as the guy says, <laughs> it's kind of an uncomfortable label. You don't want to admit it, but that's really what you are. Who's your daddy? You're not following the Savior. You're following Satanism. And you wonder why it's getting so devilish out there. Not only has the satanic law of self-love infiltrated the church, self-worship, but this law of self-indulgence, my body, my choice, which again, those people who live like that, you do such things, you're practicing Satanists. Deal with it. You can say you're Christian all you want, but you're following Satan, right? Now, let's go back to that, my body, my choice. I don't know about you, but they're so bent on that, right? And very vehement about that. Don't you deny my body, my choice. Anybody know some hypocrisy going on lately with my body, my choice? Where's all that talk anymore? You don't hear none of that talk anymore. Really, what's going on today is your body, uh, his choice, right, is really what's going on. Uh, and so to me, you look at that, it's like, whoa, what's going on here? There's no consistency. That's called hypocrisy, right? Uh, and so is that hypocrisy hiding another dark, dare I say, satanic agenda? I think so, especially when you go back to that issue there uh, with the jab thing. Uh, you look at the people who are behind that and who are promoting it, like Bill Gates uh, and his now ex-wife, Melinda Gates. Uh, I don't know about you, but... Uh, they're acting like practical Satanists to me, right? And we saw this before in our, our, our uh, study uh, in the, uh, the abortion issue. Uh, the reason why Bill Gates, he's not only a population control, the population control elites today, the billionaire elites, they believe it's their duty to annihilate 90% of the world because of the lie. Satan's the father of all lies, right? Because of the lie saying that we're overpopulated. I, I do this all the time. In fact, I do every time I fly, I fly all the time. I look out the window. I don't know if you guys have ever done that. You get in a plane 
And if you look out the window, I don't know about you, but I see a ton of open space. <laughs> We're not overpopulated. It's an illusion. It's a lie, right? They always show downtown New York City. Ah, you know, Beijing, China, we're all popular. We're going to die. Ah. Fly on a plane, look out the window. There is, it's a lie. But that's what they believe, that they want to annihilate 90%. Bill Gates is one of those guys. And this is why he's also pro-jab, but also pro-abortion. And the reason why is because he grew up with people who agreed with Satanism, I need to murder children on demand. His dad worked for Planned Parenthood. Watch this. One issue that really grabbed me as, as urgent uh, was, were issues related to population, uh, reproductive health. But did you come to reproductive issues as an intellectual? When I was growing up, my parents were always involved in various uh, uh, volunteer things. My dad was uh, head of Planned Parenthood. And... It was very controversial uh, to be involved with that. Uh, yeah. Uh, why? Because it's not just wrong. It's what? That's what Satanists believe. Right? That explains why he's this population. He was raised in that environment. Right? Uh, and is it any wonder uh, that Roe v. Wade came out in 1973? For those of you that were with us on our journey in the history of Satanism, that's when Anton LaVey... Satanism really began to take off in where? In America. And at the same time, here comes Roe v. Wade. And that's their religious sacrament. You think it's by chance? I don't think so, folks. Trace the trail. It's all there. Okay. But if you think about this, this would make Bill Gates, in essence, Mr. Pro-Abortion Population Control Guy, Mr. I, we, I think it's a great idea to murder people. Last time I checked, murdering 90% of the planet. And have you always noticed? It's like, okay, so you want to really annihilate 90% of the planet. All right, let's start with your family. Oh, no, no. See, it's always somebody else's family, right? But that would make him a what? A practicing what? Satanist. Now, for those of you who think it's too extreme, oh, come on, now you're really getting into conspiracy theory stuff, Pastor Riley. Right? That, that Bill Gates could really be part of a satanic cabal and all that kind of crazy stuff. And Well, again, what did we just see? This is the law of self-indulgence. I'm just quoting Satanism. This is their law. Do whatever I want. Okay, my body, my choice, abortion, murder, whatever. And again, why? Because that is the core of who Satan is. Jesus called it out. John 8, 44. You belong to, who's your daddy? You belong to your father, the who? The devil. And you want to carry out your father's desire. Well, what, how do you know if Satan's your daddy? You're doing these two things. He's a what? Murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth. There is no truth in him. And when he lies, he speaks his native language, for he's a liar and the father of all lies. Okay. And last time I checked, trying to annihilate 90% of the world, that's quite, that's, that's quite a bit of murder. So who's your daddy? Your daddy's Satan. You're following Satan, Satanism. Okay, and dare I say, you lie all the time about what you're really, uh, your real motives are. But, but again, that, that, come on, Bill Gates, Satanist agenda. Well, crap. I don't know if you saw this, but I got the tape, but uh, his now ex-wife, Melinda, recently ex-wife, uh, Melinda Gates, uh, she was on a news interview uh, discussing the jab issue. And notice the jewelry that she just happened to be displaying to the whole world. Let's take a look. Well, this pandemic has certainly exposed weaknesses and strengths. You're focusing on one of the, the weaknesses that's been exposed here, and that's how we take care of our caregivers. Why did you decide to take on this issue? If we're going to look at reopening our economy, we have to take care of our most essential workers. 85% of nurses are women. And yet, who's the primary caregiver at home? These people tell you who they are if you look. Most people ain't looking. And if you don't think that that's a tie with Satanism, folks, then you need to do your research. That's all of it. We haven't even got into the symbols yet. That's coming, Lord willing, for still alive, still here later. The satanic upside, uh, upside down cross that she was clearly wearing there, folks. Of all things to wear, why would you wear that? Right? If you had any, any ounce of decency, would, would you guys ever put one on? As a, no. A, why, why would you flaunt it on a TV interview? Because who's your daddy? Who are you following? You ain't following Jesus, that's for sure. Right? And hail Satan, uh, 666. Oh, by the way, look whose family is also into not just witchcraft, but satanism as well and again you take a look at what they promote and guess what they also want abortion on demand i'm telling you folks the democrat party uh you know some people have spelled it a different way 
right? They add a little letter there. Uh, but you take a look at what they stand for. It's the same thing that not just witches are promoting. You're going to see tonight. It's the same thing that Satanists are promoting. And again, why are you wearing that? Because they want the same thing. It's the law of self-indulgence. My body, my choice. And this is what that party's become, right? Let's take a look at this. That's why no matter how great the challenge, no matter how fierce the opposition, there's one thing the past few years have shown. It's that Planned Parenthood is not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere today. It's not going anywhere tomorrow. As long as we've got a fight to make sure women have access to quality, affordable health care, and as long as we've got to fight to protect a woman's right to make her own choices about her own health, I want you to know that you've also got a president who's going to be right there with you, fighting every step of the way. Thank you, Planned Parenthood. God bless you. Faith leaders express their disappointment and outrage at the passage of a bill in New York making abortion legal up until birth. The bill was first introduced in 2007 and removes abortion from the state criminal code and ensures women the right to an abortion in New York should that federal right ever be changed by the Supreme Court. But Cuomo thinks it should be taken a step further. And do a constitutional amendment so no governor, no legislator, no political swing can ever jeopardize a woman's right to control her own body in this state. But far too many women are still denied critical access to reproductive health care and safe childbirth. All the laws we've passed don't count for much if they're not enforced. Rights have to exist in practice, not just on paper. Laws have to be backed up with resources and political will, and deep-seated cultural codes, religious beliefs, and structural biases have to be changed. As I... But as a deeply religious person, it's also unchristian. Whenever we yeah. talk about Roe, we're, we're talking, that fight has been happening through the entirety of our lives. Mm -hmm. My mother had that fight. My grandmother had that. I mean, how does the, how can you keep from like the generational exhaustion? When I think about um, all of the statistics that um, are, are painful of what women are uh, confronting Zerlina today in our country and what uh, even more women confronted uh, pre row and how many women died and how many uh, more women were maimed because of unsafe uh, abortion practices you know, we just can't go back to right. that like that's uh, unconscionable to me um, and also and I'm sure that this will unleash uh, another wave of hate in my direction <laughs> but as a deeply religious person it's also unchristian It's not unchristian, it's pro-Satanism. Who's your daddy? Who wants to be able to kill children on demand? It is their religious sacrament. And how twisted it is, you want to make it sound a Christian right. It's sick, it's twisted. But that's what Satan does. He takes what? Takes God's truth, twists it, contorts it, perverts it, and that's what these people are doing. Okay? Satanists, I'm telling you folks, if you do the research, that's why we're doing it here. Remember when we did our witchcraft study? I, I warned you in the beginning. I says, it's, the further we get into this study... If you've never studied witchcraft, and of course I came out of the occult, and I remember, man, after I got saved, and I'm in, quote, church world, I'm going like, you guys are doing new age, and you, you don't even know it. You, you're following into occult practices, and you don't even know it, right? But Because I, I came out of that. A lot of churches that make it. But when we did our witchcraft study, I warned you, I said, the more we go, watch what's going to happen. The further we get in the study, you're going to start seeing it everywhere. But you didn't know it because you weren't equipped. Same thing I'm telling you, folks. Satanism and Satanists are everywhere. Not just witches, Satanists including the high places, more than we could ever dream, uh, including the uh, elites. And dare I say, even so-called evangelical churches that are really practicing Satanists who go along with this same agenda. That's what it is. And you wonder why not just the world, but the church is getting so messed up. It's the law of self-indulgence, my body, 
my choice. Don't tell me what to do. Straight up Satanism. Now, that's just one behavior of this mindset of this law of self-indulgence. Let's now get into the second one that Satanists are huge uh, promoters of, and that's homosexuality, right? right? Be gay, hail Satan, right? This is a major underpinning of their belief system, right? And it has penetrated the world. It's not, listen, an alternative lifestyle. It's a satanic belief, right? And which one came first in our country? If you do the history, Satanism came first, and then after it gained a foothold, not just abortion began to take off, homosexuality did too. But we've been throwing a smokescreen. It's just an alternative lifestyle. No, it's a satanic lifestyle. It's just word speak. But this is where it's coming from, right? And uh, But let's take a look at what, what does God say about that? Is that how we're supposed to live? Absolutely not. Leviticus 18, 22, do not lie with a man as one lies with a woman. That is what? What does God call that? Detestable, right? And then, of course, not just Old Testament, New Testament, Romans 1, 26, 27. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lusts. Even though women exchanged natural relations for unnatural ones, lesbianism, in the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed indecent acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their what? Perversion. God calls it detestable. It is forbidden. It's against his law. It's against nature. It's against the image of which God created us, male and female, uh, for the purposes of procreation. Uh, and, but that's just like Satan. He takes uh, God's way and what? Does the exact opposite. That's what he promotes. That's what they're about. Satanists are all about homosexuality and lesbianism on demand, as well as abortion. They are not just pro-homosexual, but now they even admit that half of uh, Satanists today are homosexuals and lesbians. Because that's, that's where it came from, this mindset. Okay, it's the law of self-indulgence. And I quote, they believe that one should live out their lusts and desires. They're all about indulgence, not abstinence. Again, not just my body, my choice. It's whatever my flesh wants to do. You can't tell me what to do. Whatever feels good. Does that sound familiar? That's Satanism. That's where this comes from. Okay, and the people who live like this, whether you want to admit it or not, you're a practicing Satanist. As Anton Lombay would say, but people don't want to admit that. But you are, okay, you need to call it for what it is. In fact, here's an article showing how many Satanists are not just promoting homosexuality and lesbianism, do whatever feels right, my lifestyle, right? Uh, but here's an article, more than half of American Satanists identify as LGBTQ, right? And this is, this is going on here. This is where it's coming from, folks. Lucian Greaves, that's the guy down there at the bottom we saw before. Uh, he's the head of the U.S. Temple of Satan. He's challenging America's public, quote, Christian traditions around the country. Uh, he's the head of the Satanic Temple in the, uh, in the United States. And he says more than half of Satan worshipers in their organization are homosexuals or the gender confused. We'll get to that, Lord willing, next time. Uh, and again, he told, quote, Attitude Magazine, he said, from the start, when one of our early actions was the pink mass, a lot of LGBTQ were looking for another community that didn't uh, see them as defined by their sexual orientation. Now the membership in Satanism has grown to more than 50% LGBT. Uh, and he says, here's why. I think it's because they feel disowned and disfranchised from traditional religious institutions. In other words, they don't want to sit in a church that preaches the Bible, that I didn't say it. This is not my word. I'm just the messenger. Uh, it's God's word that says, no, you can't do that. That's detestable. It's perversion. You're headed down the wide road that leads to destruction. God loves you enough to tell you that, to pull you out, to lead you to life and so they don't want to sit there and hear that because what it's not just my body my choice it's my lifestyle whatever i want to do that's satanism so guess what they're going to satanism and this is where this is coming from so you have he says a population satanism willing to embrace uh these people who are also boldly willing to speak out to the contrary uh but listen to this oddly enough in the satanic temple uh, you don't necessarily have to believe that Satan exists, but listen, direct quote. You do, however, need to hate evangelical Christians. Now, have you noticed that these guys are in your face, the satanic temple, wherever they go, and they're in your face and whatever, but have you also noticed, with all due respect, folks, a lot in the homosexual community, they're pretty vehement, man. And they get pretty in your face as well, all right? And if you don't think that that's uh, an agenda, which again, that's what Satanists do, uh, you need to listen to this. This is on congressional record. 
This is behind the movement of homosexuality. And uh, this is their words, not mine. You tell me if somebody's got a little bit of hatred towards you and I. Remember, it's supposed to be love and tolerance. It's intolerance. If you were really tolerant of all things, then why don't you tolerate my belief? That's called hypocrisy. And if you're all about love, then why do you say things like this? Watch this. This is the Gay Manifesto by Michael Swift, first published in Gay Community News, February 15th to the 21st in 1987. It is also reprinted in the congressional record. This is what it states. We shall sodomize your sons, emblems of your feeble masculinity, of your shallow dreams and vulgar lies. We shall seduce them in your schools, in your dormitories, in your gymnasiums, in your locker rooms, in your sports arenas, in your seminaries, in your youth groups, in your movie theater bathrooms, in your army bunkhouses, in your truck stops, in all your male clubs, in your house of Congress, whenever men are with men together. Your sons shall become our minions and do our biddings. They will be recast into our image. All laws banning homosexual activity will be revoked. Instead, legislation shall be passed which engenders love between men. All homosexuals stand together as brothers. We shall triumph only when we present a common face to the vicious heterosexual enemy. If you dare to cry faggot, it states, fairy queer at us, we will stab you in your cowardly hearts and defile your dead puny bodies. We will unmask the powerful homosexuals who masquerade as heterosexuals. You will be shocked and frightened when you find that your presidents and their sons, your industrialists, your senators, your mayors, your generals, your athletes, your film stars, your television personalities, your civic leaders, your priests, are not the safe, familiar, heterosexual figures you assume them to be. We are everywhere. We have infiltrated your ranks. Be careful when you speak of homosexuals because we are always among you. We may be sitting across the desk from you. We may be sleeping in the same bed with you. All churches who condemn us will be closed. Our only gods are handsome young men. For us, too much is not enough. All males who insist on remaining stupidly heterosexual will be tried in homosexual courts of justice and will become invisible men. We shall rewrite history, history filled and debased with your heterosexual lies and distortions. We shall be victorious because we are filled with the ferocious bitterness of the oppressed who have been forced to play seemingly bit parts in your dumb heterosexual shows throughout the age. We too are capable of firing guns and manning the barricades of the ultimate revolution. Tremble, hetero swine, when we appear before you without our masks. Have you heard or read this article before? Why not? Because we were lied to. And churches are complicit by keeping their mouth shut. It's a smokescreen. We were told, oh, hey, it's just they love each other. There's no big, no, that's not what God says. But it's just a mess, a, a, a community of love and tolerance. No, they hate us. And really, they hate this. Because this says it's wrong. God says it wrong. I'm not making this up. I, I didn't write this book. God did. I'm just reporting it. I'm just the newspaper boy. I'm just declaring the news. And the news is, you're wrong. Right? It's the law of self-indulgence. Right? It's not just a lifestyle. That's what Satanism believes. They believe they should live out their lusts and desires, indulgence, not abstinence, whatever my flesh wants to do, whatever feels good. It's straight up Satanism. Now, why do they oftentimes get so militant with their behavior? Because that is another law of Satanism. And I quote, straight from the church of Satan.com. When walking in open territory, bother no one. If someone bothers you, ask him to stop. Quote, if he does not stop, destroy him. That doesn't sound like love and tolerance. But folks, that attitude, I will destroy you. I will infiltrate you. I will take you over. I'll take you to court. You're going to die. You're going to, we don't have a fire gun. 
That's a law of Satanism. Who's your daddy? And again, guess what? This is also being promoted by what party? The same party, Democrat Party. It's Satanism, folks. And as crazy as it is, guess who all else is, in essence, promoting and practicing Satanism? The church. And I quote, 41% of Christians interviewed believe that the Bible's condemnation of homosexuality, quote, does not apply today. It used to be 33%. Now it's 41%. So guess what? You're what? What did Anton LaVey call for what it will? You're promoting Satanism. You're practicing Satan. Churches. What Bible are you reading? Well, guess what? You're not reading the Bible. And you know why? Because you've fallen for the first law of Satanism. It's all about self-worship, whatever feels good. You don't get the Bible in most churches today. You get pop psychology, stories made up, and, and you don't get the Bible. So people have never even been taught Leviticus or Romans or anything. Basically, all about self, whatever feels good. I want to hear that. I want to hear that. And then even, even if they, quote, do read the Bible, they come with this mantra. Well, I know that that's what the Bible says, but my God is a God of love, and he... No, that's called an idol. That's not the biblical God. You made that God up. That's called an idol. That's what idols are. You made it up. You're worshiping something that's not God. God says it's wrong. But that's the way of the world. And it's not just the way of the world. It's the way of who? This is Satanism, man. My body, my choice. Quote, my lifestyle, whatever I want to do. You can't tell me what to do. That's where all this is coming from, right? Uh, and that's what they're promoting. So in essence, not only satanic law of self-love has infiltrated the church, but again, the satanic law of self-indulgence, whatever feels good, my body, my choice is also here in the church. Now, again, if you don't think that promoting homosexuality, lesbianism uh, is a straight up promoting of Satanism, then you better pay attention to the media. Now watch this. We have rolled over in our country so much on this issue, homosexuality, lesbianism, and not just in our country, but even in the church, keeping your mouth shut about it or going along with it, which makes you a practicing Satanist, that these people, listen, are not just coming out of the closet and declaring themselves to be homosexual or lesbian. Listen, they're coming out of the closet admitting this is pure, straight-up Satanism. Have you listened to the music out there? It's gone to the next stage. We have rolled over on this so much. They admit homosexuality, Satan worship, same thing. That's where it's coming from. I'll just share you a, a piece of one song that's out there. Watch this. We can be here all day, folks. People are not paying attention to the, they're, they're, they're admit, they have no bones. We've rolled over on it. So let's just now go to that next stage and tell everybody where this is really coming from. It's nuts, folks. This is what's going on. They admit it themselves. But people, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. You're a wacko now. They admit it. It's, this is where it's coming from. It's Satanism. The law of self-indulgence. Live out your lusts and desires. Indulgence, not absence. Whatever your flesh wants me to do and you don't. They're not only coming out of the closet saying we're homosexual. They're saying, listen, it's, it's straight up Satanism. It's hand in hand. It's the same thing. That's where it's coming from. Let me give you just one more example. This is a, a, a little a Nas X, a rapper. I'm going to uh, actually, I was very careful what to even show you. Because it is so, I'll use the word, sickingly graphic. Uh, I can't show you that in good conscience. But here he is admitting, yeah, it's one and the same. Homosexuality, Satanism, all goes together. Watch this. Now to the number one song on the Billboard Hot 100 as of today. It's called Montero, Call Me By Your Name by Lil Nas X. Take a listen. Call me when you want, call me when you need, call me in the morning. 
That victory to number one has not come without controversy as the video satanic theme and homoerotic displays of affection have caused quite the reaction online and beyond. Rolling Stone called the video unabashedly queer and with the release of the song Lil Nas X also attached a letter to his 14 year old self which read in part, this is very scary for me. People will be angry. They will say I'm pushing an agenda, but the truth is I am. The agenda to make people stay out of other people's lives and stop dictating who they should be. What's that? That's the law of self-indulgence. That's the satanic law. At least, he, at least he's honest. Yeah, I'm using music as an agenda. I'm encouraging Satanism, which is the same thing as where you're getting the homosexuality thing. Right? Now, let me share with you a screenshot of the article. This is all I'm going to show you of it, and it's sick. Uh, but this, this rapper guy, he put human blood into 666 pairs of Nikes, uh, and he says that being queer means embracing your villainy, i.e. Satanism. Not content with merely uh, spurring on uh, a controversy with uh, the music in the music industry, uh, now he's doing this with blood-infused Nikes, okay? Uh, and then in the music video, again, that was the number one song on billboards, right? But in the music video, he cavorts erotically with various iterations with Satan in a, in a stone by crowd-throwing, I'm not going to say, uh, transforms a spear that's been homoerotically aimed at him into a stripper pole and then slides all the way down the pole into hell before giving Satan a lap dance uh, as an excuse to seduce him, all the while singing about gay sex. He's also consistently blunt, explaining the importance of the song and how it fits into the role of one being uh, as, as one, of the, one of the gay entertainers in the music industry. And listen to this phrase. I'm not making this up. Be gay, do crimes, Enjoy hell. So first it's be gay, do drugs, hail Satan. And this guy says, be gay, do crimes, enjoy hell. Anybody see a consistent pattern here? There's no conspiracy theory here, folks. If you got eyes to see, he who has ears to hear. Are you listening? This is going on. Not just in the world, it's going on in the church. It's the satanic law of self-indulgence. And speaking of the church, those who go along with this, either keeping your mouth shut about it, when people need to know it's not just wrong. Why? Because God loves them enough to pull them out of that path of destruction and lead them to a healthy lifestyle. His lifestyle. Eternal life through Christ. God wants us to tell the truth because that's what sets people free. This leads to bondage and destruction. And keep your mouth shut is basically saying, hey, go get destroyed. So either keeping your mouth shut about it or if you flat out say, yeah, that's perfectly fine. This guy has got a message for you. Watch this. Hey, everybody, I have been so irritated at progressive Christians that have decided to blur, misrepresent the gospel intentionally to try to win friends because they don't understand politics, economics, civics, or the greatest country ever to exist in the history of the world. Check out this video of a Satanist, like a legitimate Satanist that thanks people like Andy Stanley, people like Rick Warren, people like John Piper, people like Timothy Keller, the Satanist says, hey, you progressive Christians, you're actually helping the Satanist cause. Play tape. There is a wave of Christian people that I have met on this app and I have found favor among them. Progressive Christians are what the world needs right now. We both agree that religion needs massive amounts of change. Between your flawed Bibles, asinine ideals, and just outright misinformation, we've had enough. So in a Lucifer gang first, I'm here to thank you Christians, progressive Christians, for your assistance in this fight against misinformation. So I don't think any more evidence needs to be submitted that pastors like Timothy Keller, like John Piper, like Rick Warren, uh, like Andy Stanley, some people would say that if you're winning approval of people that are legitimately Satanists, you have to repent and you have to reconsider what you are doing. This is a spiritual war that we're in. Only one side supports post-birth abortions. Only one side supports the transgender nonsense happening in our country. And the Satanists, they're very happy when they see progressive Christians come to their side. I hope this video makes a lot of you that think that Christianity and liberalism, they're somehow compatible. They're at odds with each other. Yeah, amen. And the word that's used there is bewitched you. 
right? Uh, so basically, why, why is that wrong? Why do these people need to repent? He's talking about so-called progressive. Because here's what's going on. It's all word speak. So when you understand what Satanism is, let me just spell it out for you. The term that we use and hear all the time uh, today, liberalism, is really speaking of Satanism in the world, right? That's all liberalism is. It's Satanism being promoted in the world, right? Call it what you will, it is. The term now that we're getting used to, unfortunately, progressive Christianity is Satanism being promoted now in the church. You get it? That's what's going on. It's all terminology, it's all word speak, but that's what's going on. Satanism has impacted the world, but see, that's just too creepy. As Anton LaVey, you just don't, that's, that's a harsh label. You don't want to admit it. So let's just change it. It's liberals. It's liberal ideals. It's liberalism. No, it's Satanism. It's progressive Christianity. We're trying to better reach our culture and identify. No, it's Satanism now in the church. This is why things are getting so bad, which I like what one guy said this. Folks, here's the bottom line. Read your Bible. You can't be the bride of Christ and the girlfriend of Satan. You know why? Because the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God. You can't mix the two. You cannot mix the two. Unfortunately, that's not all. These law of the self-indulgence, it's expressed in another way by Satanists. And Lord willing, next time, because we're out of time, we'll get to this one. It goes downhill as you go. Gender fluidity. And the folks that are promoting this, including the school system, Parents, you better yank your kids out faster than you can get out of this sanctuary. Number one, and there's options, no excuses today. Uh, number two, you better read what Jesus said. You cause one of these little ones to stumble. You're in a heap of trouble. But we'll get to that, Lord willing, next time. Let's pray. Father, we love you and thank you so much again for our study tonight. And just thank you, God. It's just, you told us this would happen in the seven-year tribulation, that society is going to be so wicked and evil that... They not only do not respond to your, your, your call uh, to get right with you, uh, even in the midst of your judgment, uh, be, because it says they, they would not repent of the work of their hands and the worship of demons. So that means if we're getting close to that time frame, we should be seeing, unfortunately, what we're seeing right now, a rise of the occult, including devil worship, Satanism. God, it's happening before our very eyes. It's even coming into the so-called church. It's not your church. But they claim to be. But God, help us as your true church to stick to your truth. And, and these people that are involved, even that are pro-abortion, pro-homosexual, God, help, help, help us to love them enough to tell them in love. We don't want to do eye for an eye, tooth or tooth, that they're militant towards us. We still love them straight to you, Jesus. But we don't compromise the truth because your truth is what sets them free. Such were as some as we were. We used to live like that. We used to live for the flesh, but we know better. So they're still there. So God, help us to love them. Hold them out. That, that's, a, that's a road of destruction. It's not a, a lifestyle. It's not a healthy lifestyle. You tell us it's a lifestyle that ultimately will catch up to them and it will destroy them. God, help us to love them enough to tell them the truth. Get us equipped, God. Whether it's, again, abortion, homosexual, whatever it is, God. And they could join us one day, being washed, justified, sanctified through the blood of Jesus, filled with your spirit, with a brand new life, whole and new and clean, awaiting the incredible future that you have for us, all as an act of your love and grace. May we be that church, God. Use our study tonight. May that, may that come to pass with what time we have left. We ask all this in your wonderful name, in Jesus' name.